Hi, I'm Carrie Lebosky. I'm a professor of soil science and soil fertility uh, and nutrient management extension specialist at University of Wisconsin. Today, uh, we're going to be talking about nutrient crediting for manure and organic waste. Uh, so, some of the basics of what you need to know. I think manure is good stuff. It contains nutrients. It can be used to offset our fertilizer bill. Uh, but you need to keep in mind that all manure is not created equally, and we'll get into more detail with that. Uh, manure nutrients are also not all available. Uh, it's a, a mixture, the total nutrients are a, a mixture of organic and inorganic nutrients. And some of these nutrients can be lost. And so our nutrient credit is really dependent on a few things. The amount of manure applied, the species of the animal, uh, the dry matter content, and time to incorporation. And dry matter content in some ways is also related to uh, storage or handling of that manure. Uh, this uh, uh, table, and there's a lot of stuff on it I realize, but it's really just to highlight the typical total nutrient content of manures in Wisconsin. Uh, and it's based off of your, what you're seeing is a median value uh, for all manures tested uh, from 1998 to 2012. Uh, these were samples that were sent to the UW lab uh, as well as some of the private labs uh, in Wisconsin that test manure. They shared their data with us. Uh, we can see uh, total N, total P205, total K2O, and total S along with the dry matter content. And again, these are median uh, values. Uh, we have solid manures here uh, and uh, liquid manures on the bottom. Note we have differences in units between pounds per thousand gallons or pounds per ton. And we also break down dairy manure uh, within each solid or liquid category into further dry matter classifications between solid and semi-solid, uh, solid having uh, higher dry matter. And then uh, in the liquid category, we break down between slurry and liquid, liquid being the most liquid, uh, less than 4% uh, dry matter. And so if we just look at some of these differences here, uh, let's look at this uh, dairy uh, liquid versus dairy slurry. Here are the big difference is dry matter content. You can see the nitrogen content varies quite a bit. Uh, we have a lot more uh, nitrogen, uh, 24 versus 14 pounds of N per, total N per thousand gallons, uh, where we have slurry versus the liquid. And we also see double the nutrient content for phosphate and uh, uh, about a third more uh, potassium as well. So this chart's just highlighting uh, typical values. Uh, it can be used if you don't test your manure, but keep in mind there's a very big range on these median values. Uh, very, very large. And I urge people to get a good manure sample because that's more important uh, than using a, what we call a book value like this that may not be particularly representative of your farm. So moving into nitrogen availability, the total N in manure is composed of ammonium N, which is immediately available to a plant, but also can be lost through volatilization, and organic N, which is not immediately available, but can be mineralized uh, and uh, made available. So the available N in manure is a, a mixture of ammonium that's not lost, plus the mineralizable N from uh, the organic N component. So our first year nitrogen availability varies with animal species and storage and, and, and management. Now we also have second and third year N availability uh, credits or N credits. Uh, in the second year, it's just 10% of the total N applied. Uh, and third year, 5% of the total N applied, regardless of species or storage. And we'll see that a little bit more detail in another slide or two. Now the availability of nitrogen is uh, dependent on incorporation because we said you know it's dependent on uh, mineralization of organic N, but then the loss of ammonium, and that uh, ammonium can be lost uh, mainly through volatilization. So time to incorporation is a really important factor in uh, N availability. So the, we have greater availability if that manure is incorporated within one hour of application or it's injected. Uh, we have an intermediate level of availability if it's incorporated within 1 to 72 hours of application, so it would be broadcast but then incorporated 1 to 72 hours later. And then our lowest availability occurs if that manure is broadcast and never incorporated or incorporated more than three days after application. So the longer it sits on the soil surface, the more ammonia will volatilize. 
Now our phosphorus availability, uh, here total P is uh, composed of inorganic phosphate plus organic phosphate. Uh, we typically consider uh, P in manure to be less available than P fertilizer. That's been fairly common for a long period of time. However, we conducted some studies here in Wisconsin, and that showed uh, that when we looked at uh, dairy solid or liquid, um, swine or chicken manure, we had two locations, it demonstrated that phosphorus availability from manure was 100% available. Uh, and at low and optimum soil test levels. Uh, so we had the same, uh, when the same total amount of phosphorus was applied, not inorganic P, total P, with manure or fertilizer, we obtained the same yields. Uh, so it's really saying that manure P is 100% available. But from a practical standpoint, we know that that's not very practical. Uh, so we have the recommendations or guidelines set at 80 percent of total P is considered available in the first year regardless of animal species or storage. And that's to get at the fact that uh, manure is variable as it's being hauled uh, or uh, pumped out of a pit. There's some variation, uh, but even when it's being applied to the field, uh, the rate might vary a little bit. So we give a little bit of wiggle room. Now we do not take second or third year credits for uh, phosphorus. We're going to pick those up in our soil tests, so that's how we'll track those nutrients. Now potassium is uh, really only in the liquid fraction, uh, so technically it's 100% available, just like P, uh, but we set the availability at 80% again to account for, uh, to give us wiggle room for uh, differences in uh, nutrient composition as a pit's being uh, uh, agitated and, and hauled out of, but also application differences. And again, no second or third year credits for K, uh, but we'll track those with our soil test levels. Now this table is showing our estimated nutrient availability for the various manures. Uh, so here's our first year availability. Let's focus on that with our animal species. And if we move over here uh, for phosphate and uh, potassium, we can see 80% available. Um, just like we just discussed. Now for nitrogen, here's where we're seeing our differences in time to incorporation. Our greatest availability, this is a percentage of the total N. Uh, it, we have, would have 50% is available if we're uh, injecting or incorporating within one hour uh, if we have uh, dairy or beef uh, liquid manures. Uh, we have lower availability, you can see as we, the time to, it's broadcast and incorporated uh, 1 to 72 hours and then even lower availability if we never uh, incorporate or it's more than th three days after incorporation. Now if we look at the, the solid manures, we have some different uh, values. It's the same trend. Uh, the greater the time to incorporation, the lower the N availability, again uh, accounting for some of that ammonia volatilization, uh, but also uh, need to point out that our uh, availability in general for these solid materials is lower uh, than liquid materials when we're talking dairy and beef. Now our highest availability of N is with poultry, uh, where we have 60% of the total N's available. Oh, I shouldn't say that. That's the next highest. The very highest is swine itself, which is 65%. So they do vary by species and how they uh, change with um, uh, time to incorporation. So to give a, a quick example here, uh, we'll say we have a dairy slurry, it's going to be applied at 10,000 gallons per acre, it's going to be knifed in, so injected, uh, our total N application, uh, our total N is 30 pounds per thousand gallons, phosphate's 9 pounds, and uh, K2O is 20 pounds per thousand gallons. So if we look at our nutrient credits, and we've got first year in blue, second year in orange, third year in green, if we look at that uh, nitrogen, we'd take um, and say we've got 50% uh, or 0.5 of the 30 pounds of total N uh, would be available and multiply that by 10, which is our application rate to give us 150 pounds of available N in that first year. Uh, we can do the same thing for P and K. Now if we move down into second and, second and third year credits, again we don't take P or K credits, and for nitrogen, we go through that same process. We take, or for, yes, for nitrogen, we go through the same process. We take our availability coefficient, 10% for year two, 5% for year three, 
we multiply it by the total unapplied in that first year, 30, and our application rate of 10. Uh, fairly simple to, to walk through this math. Now remember when you're taking these nutrient credits, if manure is applied in two or more consecutive years, that's back-to-back -back years, two years in a row or three years in a row, you need to take the credit uh, for the manure that was just applied plus all the other applications for the previous two crop years. It's a cumulative thing. So if you apply manure three years in a row, you're going to have a higher N availability uh, than what you'd calculate just for that first year because you're getting a little bit of second year credit from the previous year and a little bit of third year credit from the, uh, what was applied two years prior. So just remember to keep track of all of that. Now, moving into municipal biosolids and other organic waste. Uh, if we think about our nitrogen credits, uh, the first year credits, uh, we look at it two ways, whether it's been incorporated within three days of application or not incorporated. Uh, so if we look at our available N, uh, we look at our ammonium content uh, multiplied uh, or added to uh, a fraction of our uh, organic N that's mineralized. So if we look at this equation, you know, more detail, we have total N minus ammonium N. So the difference, therefore, is organic N. And we're assuming that 25% of that mineralizes. So if we take that fraction of organic N that's available, add to it the ammonium content if it's been incorporated, and that's our availability. Uh, if it has not been incorporated, then we uh, take the, we do the same thing to get the organic N availability here. This, uh, second part of the equation is the same, uh, but the front part with ammonium, what we do is we say that half of that might get lost, so we only take 50% of that. So we've reduced uh, end credit if we're not incorporating municipal biosolids or other organic waste. Now, um, the second year credits for nitrogen, 12% uh, of the organic N is considered available in the second year, and for third year credits, 6% is considered available in the third year. Now when we look at phosphorus and potassium credits for municipal biosolids, uh, both of these, uh, a, a good way to uh, assess them would be a saying 80% of the total uh, P or K would be what's available. Now with uh, phosphorus, that um, availability could vary some based on the uh, treatment system that's used for the municipal biosolids, whether it's an alum treated or a, a lime treated type system, but 80% is about uh, a good way to start with it. Again, soil testing is a great way to pick up changes uh, of what's actually happening out there when these materials are applied. Now, uh, a big caution here is that lab reports for biosolids and other organic waste often look different than manure. And the units are often reported differently. Instead of seeing pounds of total N per thousand gallons, you might see parts per million of total Keldahl N. And so you're going to have to uh, be able to convert those back and forth. And that's a, a, a big thing that uh, initially messes folks up uh, when they're looking at biosolids reports. Now, just to kind of shift gears a little bit here and uh, just very, very briefly touch on nutrient management planning. Uh, so from the purposes of, you know, uh, getting your uh, CCA um, certification, uh, some things you need to keep in mind is that um, with nutrient management planning, the goal is to reduce nutrient losses and improve water quality, to more wisely use our nutrients, uh, really looking at uh, the, the four R's of nutrient management, looking at the right rate, right source, right time, and right place. Now, uh, there can be uh, nitrogen-based management, but uh, typically phosphorus-based management is a, uh, comes into play more often. Uh, we can use the P-index uh, for that. And when we're using P-based management, you need to keep in mind that nitrogen uh, often uh, becomes limiting before P, okay? Just keep that in mind. You need to know the rules, okay? So one of the key uh, rules for nutrient management planning is NRCS code 590. That's a nutrient management planning code. They use it for any number of things when you're seeking cost share with USDA NRCS. Uh, 590 has also been written into uh, 
Depart uh, Wisconsin Department of Ag Trade and Consumer Protection Codes, as well as Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. Uh, so, and the, and each and the DAC cap and the DNR also have some different rules. Keep in mind, DNR has some very special rules for large permitted farms uh, that have a WPDES permit. Uh, they have some additional rules as well. And we just can't go into all those details, but you need to be aware that this exists and you need to go find them. Uh, and I also just want to uh, put a plug in when you're doing nutrient management planning. Uh, the University of Wisconsin has a program called SNAP Plus, and it's nutrient management planning software, and it really helps uh, you work through all of these type of uh, issues with taking credits and figuring out the recommended rate and all that, and figuring out if you've applied too much or not. And it's freely available um, for download at snapplus.wisc.edu. Uh, so with that, uh, we'll wrap up our uh, nutrient crediting uh, chapter here uh, for manure and biosolids. Um, if you need more information, look at Chapter 9, Nutrient Credits, in uh, Publication A2809. And again, SNAP Plus Nutrient Management Software uh, is out there and available uh, freely for you to use. Yeah.